Aquí vamos. Hello, how are you doing? It's time again to do this stream. I know I'm late, I'm sorry, I've been busy. So let's do something slightly different. I need to do a lot of things here in the classes, but uh, so I'll skip this time the command line version for molecular representations and I'll skip to something interesting too. I'm going to skip the image tutorials. Some of them are really, really good, but sometimes they are off the point of getting something useful. Well, not useful. They, they, they go into detail on, on illustrating things, which is always useful, but they may take us into paths that we haven't covered before. So I'm going to skip all the way to structure, analysis and comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, please, if you join, that would be awesome. If you are not online, well, maybe next time. So let's dive right in. Here we have um, more information than usual. And well, as I update the, the data on the stream, you can go ahead and start reading this. It's going to try to give us more information, more background in what we are going to do and the context. Sorry for the wait. Yep, that's better. So this tutorial includes binding site analysis and comparison of related structures by superposition and morphing. So the morphing is going to be rough, or it's going to be, well, rough. What I mean is going mean to be the most difficult part. The rest is going to be fairly easy. Here we have the background setup, distan distances, angles, rotamers, clashes, surfaces, and attributes. So let's start there, and we'll take it one bullet point of a time. So background. The pathogenic staphylo organism Staphylococcus aureus makes a pigment called Staphyloxanthin. The pigment imparts a golden color, hence the aureus, but more importantly, contributes to the virulence by protecting the bacteria from being killed by the host immune system. The S aureus enzyme CRTM may be a good drug target because it catalyzes a key step in Staphyloxanthin synthesis. And there's a paper I don't know if I could open it right here, right now, but if you if you can get it, if you're interested in this, oh, it's a science paper, nice. Although I shouldn't say that, right? Because can we? No, okay, well, not surprisingly, but I think to notice that, yeah, PubMed has a, a version that is, available okay good well but that is beyond today let's go back here we will view and compare different structures of this enzyme we're going to start chimera please do go ahead and do it yourselves and we are going to jump into Well, I already did my setup the usual way I do. I have, let me show you, you instead of just giving you instructions. I have my main view over here on the left. Then on the right, the model panel, the view, the side viewing, as well as the reply log. Okay. You might, your mileage may vary. You can set it up any way it's useful for you. This is useful for me. Okay. Ah, well, I didn't show the command line. I'm going to open it. it. Remember, it's usually in favorites, so you just add it there. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it's asking us to have the preference 
no, let me read. So choose favorites. I to add to favorite toolbar. Place some icons on the toolbars. This open preferences. Well, let, let's do that. This open the preference set to category tools. OK, so let's go back here. Favorites. Add to favorites toolbar. OK, we have this one. And chose category tools. OK, we are up. Oh, sorry, no, we are in tools and check side view which should be there side view oh, okay here toolbars find h bond so what it's doing it's adding these icons over here find clashes contacts frotamers and reply log oh wait wait rotamers reply log here Okay, that's interesting. Now we have these tools on the side, always present. So if my reply log was not up, I could bring it up. If my side view, sorry, that's not my side view. If my side view was not up, this will bring it up. Good. Now, uh, well, I already saved because I really want to start using these recommendations. And let's get the, f the first structure. So I'm going to just copy paste Open3W7F right there in our command line down here oh i haven't yeah i was i didn't notice that my webcam is hiding the reply log now you can see it and let's do this there we go this is that structure looks pretty amazing it's i think it's a dimer you can see here the separation between the chains and the pigment right there in the center of the molecule well in the active side then this tutorial wants us to go presets interactive one so presets interactive one okay not my favorite but that's it so these presets that uh, sorry these presets display the two proteins chains a and b as red and blue bound molecules and nearby side chains are shown as a stick the two chains are copies of the enzyme so that means that these two should be identical sometimes that is the case but not always and yeah we can see clearly these ions magnesium ions in the binding side three here it says we can delete chain beam so let's go ahead and do that okay i thought b was going to be the blue but i'm going to use focus to center this again when you open a structure usually that focus is applied automatically but now i just did it manually to recenter it and well you can just move around and let's try to reproduce that just by hand well i totally not the same but close enough you practice with your mouse to do the same and this same time uh, combines two 15 carbon molecules of pharmacyl pyrophosphate and you can see the pyrophosphates into a uh, 30 carbon lipid this structure contains fire thiopyrophosphate which differs from the substrate by having sulfur in place of one oxygen sulfur atoms are shown in yellow phosphorus orange oxygen red nitrogen blue so you can see here the sulfur the phosphates well the phosphorus and the oxygen we can label the ligands with this uh, command r label ligand well for whatever reason in here my la my labels are tiny where do i change that preferences no labels here sans serif that's better i'm gonna make it slightly better there mm -hmm. that looks nice what's next 
In this structure, the farnesyl thiopyrophosphate molecules are named FPS. FPS? Correcto mundo. Trimagnesium ions help to offset the negative charge of the phosphates. We can see them right there. The ions are shown as greenish, greenish spheres. Clicking into the chimera window and hovering the mouse over the cursors, as we have covered before, will show the information about those ions. Metal coordination bonds from FPS water and the proteins are shown in dashed purple lines, as we can see everywhere. Lines drawn to indicate interactions other than covalent bonds are called pseudobonds. Hovering the cursor over a pseudobond or bonds shows balloon information about it, its end atoms and length. And we have seen this before. There we go. Who's who at the end of the bond? Delete the water labeled residues with displayed side change and place the labels near the carbon atoms instead of the residues. So this is these are three steps. One deleting the solvent. The purpose of that, at least in the context of this structure, has to be part of the exercise. I think that for an analysis, you shouldn't delete the solvent. Mm -hmm. Notice this version of the command is the same R lab, R label, but shortened, add dash display. So I guess this said, what this command says, add labels, add things that are displayed. So the side chains, apparently. And then changing the position. This set attributes, M, I don't know what that means, residue label position two. I guess the M could stand for move, okay? So instead of the original clutter of the labels on the side chains, these move the, the labels closer to the carbon, alpha carbon data. Wattle could be included in analysis, but of course here it has been removed to make the tutorial simpler. I like that when, well, I already shown you some other commands. For example, we can select the FPS molecules, both of them, focus to them, or and or set them as the pivot. So if we rotate the molecule, that is gonna be the center of rotation. And this will allow us to take a peek at the other, well, at other orientations of the same binding sorry, the same active site, and get a, a good idea of what's going on with the interactions. It looks nice, right? Have I shown you how to save an image? Well, I will here. Go to File. You know what? I'm going to use the Favorite as the toolbar, and there should be a Save as Image around here. Aha, uh -huh, why can I? Oh, there we go. Depiction, structure, sequence. What would you know? I don't find that too. Oh, well, let's go to File, Save Image, and I'm going to send that image to my desktop. desktop. Yeah, my screen, yeah. Oh, there we go. So I guess... No, that's not it. Here we go. Nice image. Let's continue with the, the tutorial. We have... We have... Some more time. Mm, how long have the stream been going? Just 15 minutes. Oh, that, that's just perfect. Then let's continue after reaching this step that is where we have the ligands, the side chains, the ions, and the labels. We can move on to do something more uh, specific. And this is the next step distances, bonds, and contacts. So it looks like several side chains could be donating hydrogen bonds to the phosphate oxygens. Although the structure does not include include hydrogens, we know they are there. What does it mean? Well, that for example, arginine has to have some protons. Maybe the aspartic acids will be protonated. The asparagine, 
the tyrosine, all of them should contain protons that are not usually detected in the in the electron, sorry, in the X-ray diffraction. One of the displaced residues is serine 21. To measure a distance, control click to pick the side shade oxygen of serine 21. Let's do that. Serine 21. Serine is this one. So I'm going to control click here. Shift control, shield, shift control double click on the nearest phosphate oxygen. Well, I think that this is going to be the nearest. Now click show distance, distance in the resulting context menu. Okay. Ah, so yeah. So the trick is actually double do the double click, the double tap. Nice. I haven't used this tool before. You know, it's it's. A new thing for me, a discovery for me. Similarly, measure the distance between side, side chain oxygen tyrosine 20, sorry, 248 and the same phosphate. So the tyrosine is up here. Neat. I'm going to deselect to make it look even nicer. The distance says seem consistent with hydrogen bonds. What do they mean? Well, 2.5 is around the most common ideal, but these are within that. Well, that's close. Okay, however, rather than measuring any distances and trying to remember the appropriate hydro hydrogen bonding distances for different atoms, we can use just find H bond. We will limit the search to H bonds involving the FPS stresses. So this is kind of the same. Well, I'm, I'm going to follow the instructions, but what they're saying is we're going to select them and then use them to look for the hydrogen bonds. And these are the instructions. Select the FPS residues, for example, with select residue FPS which is exactly what I did last time, residue, FPS. I'm going to get a mouse going because my trackpad has made me done, made me do, have made me do things I was not willing to. <laughs> then start find age one by using the icon. Here we have this window. I'm going to bring it here. And let's see what the specifications they give us for this. In that dialog, turn on the options, turn on the options, only find H bonds with at least one and selected. And this is the restriction because FPS is selected, only hydrogen bonds forming to the FPS molecule it's gonna are gonna be shown. Write information to reply log. So we're gonna we expect an output here. Set line width to three right here there we go so if you remember if i click apply the calculations are going to be performed and the window will be here still but if i click ok the calculations are going to be run but the window is going to be closed okay here we go because the fps is selected i'm going to go with focus again and then pivot and deselect it and what we have first in the screen we can see many of the hydrogen bonds that are formed between the ligand the fps and the hydrogen bond and the side chains of the protein we don't have the the water molecules remember we just uh, erased them in a previous step so we don't have those the interactions between the oxygens and the magnesium are not considered hydrogen bonds then they remain in the pseudo bond description but over here now we have a, a very comprehensive list of the donors, the serine 19 oxygen gamma, the acceptors, the oxygen 2A on FPS, and the distance for every single one of the bonds shown here. Because we have them here, we could, oh, because we do have them there in that window, we could just click on 
on save and save all of these results into a file or we could select them and copy them to a notepad and save them independently of anything else. Let's see what the tutorial asks of us. So the age bonds are shown as pseudo bonds. I guess that means those lines are not represent not real bonds. And the distances are measured. Okay, and consistent with hydrogen bonding. In a way, the consistency here means that they were identified as hydrogen bonds. Pretty much that's it. Oh, okay, so to hide the hydrogen bonds, we can use this command. That is pretty useful. But we don't remove the data already stored in our reply log down here. So we have the calculations. What else is next? Oh, we're going to find the clashes. Class clashes is similar to find edge bond, but can also identify non-polar interactions. And the contacts. Okay, so let's repeat the same. I'm gonna. Oh no, this is gonna be different because the selection it does not happen in the select window. So let's just go to the icon, find clashes. With the we need to select the FPS. Okay, and with that selected, what we need to do is designate. Oh, it's hidden. Here, designate. Wait, let me see. With this FPS still selected, click designate. Let's see if that works. Okay, yes, designate currently selected atom for checking. Good, 48 atoms, that is correct. Now it's going to check these 48 against all of the other atoms. So we set the clash contact parameters to default contact criteria. Mm -hmm. We select the treatment of clash contacts to select. Aha, uh -huh, here, select. Then if endpoint atom hidden, show endpoint residue here and then write to reply log turn off any, any other treatment options which was this I guess select the same point and write mm -hmm. okay so this is what we're gonna do then it's gonna check for those clashes against all of the other atoms in the structure it's gonna include it's gonna use contact criteria which is this overlap and for the treatment, they are going to get selected. They are going to be shown, and the information is going to be written to the reply log. So what this is not going to do is draw the lines. That will happen if I put this, sorry, this one. But I was instructed to leave it out, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quick click Apply. OK, so we see now another list here of atoms uh, molecules, atoms, and the distances, sorry, overlaps and distances. And here on the main screen, we have our clash window, but now we have a selection of many, many atoms that are making these interactions. You can see that the they are bonds are not selected, for, of course, because we only selected atoms. And most of the molecule, the PFPS, as well as the side chains, usually the tips, apparently, are involved in these interactions. We can, again, save these distances and do whatever we want with them. There is a column there with the Van der Waals overlap, the amount of overlap if these atoms were imagined or were considered to be spheres. Slightly separated spheres are considered contacts by default in this algorithm. So zero will in, the, in this scale will mean touching, positive numbers if they are overlapping, and negative if they are separated. I see some overlap in this column. 
things that are close to zero and a couple negative values here. One might simply want to list the interactive residues rather than the details of each atomic contacts. A list of the residues can be saved first. Deselect the like and select. Okay, so this is very specific. Yeah, like and is deselected, and then deselect the ions. So like this. Now only the residues are selected, or the atoms rather, and we can see here that inspector the selection inspector which is here and this is the window that appears there's 20 residues selected yeah that's correct 26 sorry residues selected we can click write list here on the bottom and save just the selection We could also do it on the log file. I don't need, don't know if I'm gonna need it, so I think I'm gonna do it. Residue list. Okay. Woof. Okay, so this been a good. 26 minutes. Should we continue? I, I feel like I shouldn't, but let's let's continue for a little bit. Hmm. So here comes another section. This is going to be angles, rotamers, and clashes. So we did contacts, we did hydrogen bonds. We're going to move a little bit forward into some of these, some of these more, uh, well, I don't want to say detailed, but maybe this other more comprehensive analysis. For example, here they want us to start off by looking at the torsion value angles in tyrosine 20, sorry, 248. Let's go for focus. Okay, so that immediately gave us the focus over here. What do we do now? Control click to pick the any atom or bond in the residue. And this will re clear, replace the, any previous selection, okay? Then open the inspector again if it's not ready, which is not because I close it. And inspecting residue, let's see. So I'm gonna click on this one again, open the inspector and inspect, so I guess change to residue. Yes. And this, yeah, it changed the way it's displayed and we have a key angle of 106 and another of 142 respectively. The backbone, angles phi and C are also given which are these down here. So this will describe the alpha helix and this describe the orientations of this, this uh, well, the side chain relative to the different carbon atoms. You know, I haven't used this before and it's super useful. I'm gonna start teaching this. Oh, I close it, was I? Yeah, I supposed to close it. We will set up a class, a clash checking and rotate the side chain interactively. So let's display first the residues for Armstrongs around the tires. Okay, we have new residues. And now, oh, because I only selected this atom, I need to press the up arrow. Yeah, but I need to click on the window to increase the selection to the whole residue. and get to the clash window back again. So we have to designate because the tyrosine is selected, this count, this atom count should change. Then we're going to clash criteria here. 
and we're going to set the treatment just to draw pseudobonds and remove everything else set the frequency of checking to after relative motions okay here so okay well it should say click apply or okay i'm gonna click apply and nothing happened that's apparently that's okay that's what we were looking for now control double look, double click this carbon the alpha carbon carbon beta bond so the alpha carbon should be here and this should be the beta so this one uh, con control double click good so we have the window that we were supposed to get and we rotate bond Oh, we got this window now. What are we supposed to do with it? The rot the rot the rotable bond that that's a typo there will be listed in adjust torsions dialog. In that dialog dialog, if the near atom is set to n, the value reported will be the value reported is the key angle one. So the near should be n because it's n alpha carbon, carbon beta, and carbon gamma. There are several ways several ways to rotate the bonds, including dragging the pointer on the dial, clicking the black arrow heads, and editing the value directly. If the dialog becomes obscure by other windows, it can be raised by just clicking on adjust torsions. Use whichever method you prefer to rotate the bond. As the sidechain moves, yellow pseudobonds show any clashes. Let, let's do that. Let's do the arrows. There we go. Whoa, a clash. More clashes. So let's go back. Wow, that was very much forgiven on that forgiving in that direction. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, nice. What's next? Well, they, here they say that the sidechain is fairly constrained, but I think it has quite space. And the sidechain about classes only, on, wait, sorry, let me read that again. The sidechain is fairly constrained. Only key angles of approximately minus 100 to minus 120 avoid clashes if only that bond is rotated. Okay, which is what we are doing. If we were to rotate more bonds at once, different parameters will emerge. The sidechain can be frozen in a new position, but for tutorial purposes, simply restore it to its original position. In the adjust torsion dialog, click the entry under bond to show a menu. In that menu, it shows revert and then deactivate. Okay. Um, ah, here, revert. And mm. okay, the activate is here too, and we can close. Good, very good. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, we're gonna close the clash checking. Wow. Okay, we're going to finish this one and leave the surface and attributes for the next one. Here we go. With part of tyrosine 248 selected, yeah, start rotamers by the beanie hat icon. Here we go. We have tyrosine. Click OK to show tyros in Rotamers for the Dumbrack. 
210 backbone dependent library. These are going to be shown in a web representation at least in the dialog. So, yeah. Here we go. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see, most of the retamers can are obviously two things and a specific constraint rotation of the very same bond we were changing and a very wide variety of a rotation of the other key value which changes the relative orientation of uh, the ring. The Rotomer Dialogues reports key 1 and key 2 and probabilities from the library based on the residues backbone conformation. Choosing a row or rows in the Rotomer, in the Rotomer Dialogues displays just the corresponding Rotomer. So if I'm to do this, for example, this is the one with, these are the first three with the highest probability. From the key angles in the dialog and the 3D display, it's evident that none of the rotamers match the conformation in the structure. Okay, yeah, well, I should even select all of them. It seems that way. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure unless I make this a wire too. But let's go with what the tutorial says. Other than the backbone angles, the probabilities given in the dialogue do not take into account any interaction specific to this structure. However, the Rotomer dialogue is integrated with clash and bond detection. Choose column, add clashes, and click OK. So columns, add clashes. and click OK, and do for the same for H1. H1, sorry. So you can see that all of them have tons of clashes, and none of them has a hydrogen bond, as the original structure does. New columns show, uh -huh, we show that tyrosine, several clashes, but no hydrogens. I already told you this. Column, blah, blah, blah. We show above the tyrosine H bonds with the ligands. We show above the tyrosine 248 H bonds with the ligand and avoids clashes. We may compensate for its not rotameric and presumably strain conformation. Side, this sidechain can be replaced with a chosen rotamer. With a single rotamer shown, either click OK in the rotamer dialog to replace the sidechain with that rotamer and remove the others, or simply close the dialog to remove the rotamers without replacing the sidechain. Although not done in this case, rotamers can be shown for a different amino acid type than in the structure, allowing for virtual or in silico mutations. And I have done that. Uh, I have a student with a dissertation where we did that to test how what was the effect on the interactions. Unlike tyrosine 248, tyrosine 41 closely resembles the highest probability tyrosine rotamer given its backbone angles. If you like, focus on tyrosine 41, select one of its bonds, use rotamers to show and evaluate rotamers of tyrosine or some other amino acid in that position. Where was the 41? This one. Rotomers. Yeah, well, there's one, there's a series here that have mostly the same orientation. I guess this one, is it the highest probability? Yeah, the highest or the second. The highest is so much more probable that you will probably use that one to rebuild. Okay, so I'm going to do the next steps, which are clear the selections, clear the labels, and clear the focus. Wow. Nice. Well, no, I didn't clear the focus. I just refocus, and because everything is not selected, uh, well, I get the whole structure. And the last one, I remove some distances that I label. So we're going to stop here. What I'm going to do in order not to have to repeat these steps is save the, se save the session on the, my desktop. 
and I'll save it for next stream. And I'm gonna write this, what is this? Surface to use for surfaces and attributes. There we go. It was a pleasure, a pleasure to show you this and I hope you join me next time. Try this and let me know what you think, if it works for you or if it doesn't. Take good care of yourselves. Have fun. <laughs>